to speak with you. I'm Sophia Soto with the Nerds of Color. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're in a huge time difference in that. Uh, <laughs> so I really yeah, appreciate bye. it. First off, I want to say what a huge fan I am of the show. I <laughs> really love it. It's so addicting and good. Binge season Thank you very like much. one day. So. <laughs> yeah, it's very bingeable. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. So I'm glad it came out. All yeah. um, so first off, I wanted to ask you what originally attracted you to the project? Oh, OK. So um, what attracted me to the project was one of the one of the first like the key things for me in any role before I even like look at the story or anything else to do with the project is is this character a character that I want to play regardless of what it's in and also like the main thing is is it a stereotype and straight away I was like this character could be played by anyone like which is amazing because you know they chose they chose someone I'm, I'm mixed race they chose someone mixed race for the for the role um and there is nothing about her um that that is a stereotype that you think you'd necessarily need someone with brown skin to play um and that was clear right from the get-go even even without reading any of the scripts just from the character description um I kind of knew that that was that was the kind of character that I wanted to put out there into the world and that was really important to me um, because it was the kind of thing that I really didn't have much of, any of really, growing up. Um, not, I, I think there's a little more in America possibly, but there was, wasn't much in um, oh, England. I'm, I'm the same boat. I'm, I'm Latina. And okay. I, I feel the same way you do. It's, it's really... It was difficult growing up not seeing yourself represented so yeah completely like i'm not saying that there weren't like people with brown skin on tv but when they were it was something that i didn't really relate to it was a very like stereotypical indian family let's say or something like that and there is so there's nothing wrong with that at all but we are <laughs> we are so much more than that as well exactly. and it's the other it's the other parts of it that weren't being represented at all so it was it was um really nice to be able to show that someone who looks like me anyone who looks like me not just me can be anybody like and can just be a normal human teenager <laughs> um without all the other stuff that they tend to write in um so that I just felt that that was really important and it was a real kind of honor to to be able to play that kind of thing and when we were all auditioning we we never we never read the scripts we were never sent the scripts um we only just had like snippets that we used to audition with um so I'm sure you can imagine <laughs> was so <laughs> random I had no idea what was going on there was just random scenes from like different episodes and I was like I, I have no idea so it was a little bit of a of a leap of faith in that respect but I just knew that that compared to some of the other things that I was being offered at the time or going for at the time that were more of a stereotype I was like no this is this is this is what I want to play this is the kind of thing that I think is important to, to put out there so yeah that's that's why I wanted to do it a beautiful answer I have to say that was one of my favorite things about the show is that you are a leading character you yeah. know there's so many times that you know our you know our representation is just side characters that are token or yeah absolutely you know, so seeing you and not lead, even just me like so just representation like broadly across the show exactly. so obviously you've got um Alex who was another lead character who's also mixed race and when do you ever get to that brown skinned girls playing really strong characters in the for forefront usually there's like the token one <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> oh my gosh that was one of my favorite things too was just yeah Seeing that and, and I was actually gonna ask you about that later because it stuck out to me as a viewer like oh my gosh like it's beautiful to see and and watch and even the LGBTQ plus love story I like you guys were just, say that. Yes, guys were just so good yes it's beautiful and it's so important so you've got that representation as well so there's a lot in there 
Um, and that is something that I am really proud of, for sure. Uh, yeah. Possibly the most thing I'm most proud of, like, is that, because I just feel it's so important, all that representation. How did you feel getting to come back for a season two? I'm really excited because we almost had the same experience as the viewer. For us, the story ended there as well. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen next to Mia or any of the, the characters. So there's, there's that element of like, oh, I want to know what happens. What are they going to write? What are they going to do with this? Like, really exciting. And, you know, clearly, it, like, it would have been a shame if it had ended there. Yes, yes. At, at, at season one. I won't say too much about it, just in case anyone's not seen it. But like, it, it was a clear something else yes. is supposed to happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it um, was. It was a very that, So yeah um it was it was just really kind of like interesting to see what they were going to do with it and um and to kind of just be a part of that story and because we switched um kind of networks or companies in that gap there was there's a, a three-year gap i think or at least two yeah. years between the seasons which is quite rare um and that was for a, a couple of things one was that we switched from bbc um in the uk and being quite a, you know, just a, a a BBC iPlayer production to getting picked up by Netflix so that transition took a bit of time and then obviously the global pandemic pushed things back a little bit further um so it was quite a feat in getting a season yeah. two done <laughs> we filmed right in the right in it right in the thick of the pandemic um where there was still a lot of restrictions and lockdowns and stuff in the UK and but yeah, we got it done. And that's a credit to our producers for being brave enough to do it. Yeah, it really it, is, for sure. Really um, and sort of a fun little creative question for you. If you could make a tagline for season two to tease for people who have not seen it yet, what would you do? What would you pick? Oh, uh, okay. I'll explain why I'm gonna say this um because I don't feel like anyone pre-watching it guessed it right do you know what I mean I yeah. so something like maybe like expect the unexpected love it love it yes <laughs> you guys so cheesy did, but, but you guys did twists in season yeah. two like it was good <laughs> but that's that's one of the key things about that the show is you know it's 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 written in a certain way where it's it's supposed to be you know have those cheesy corny little kind of things at the end of the episode that make you want to watch more we're under no illusions that this is an emmy winning show it's but it's not supposed to be that it's just supposed to be fun was, and watchable yes. and escape and a bit silly at times and that is you know that that is what it is we're very it's very it's a very self-aware show and I love that Dan the writer writes it like that you know he's not trying to be too serious or or you know um so yeah something something like that would be a good time I think I think those make the best shows though because when I tell you I got lost in that world binge watching season two straight through like that's the best type of television so like yeah for really, sure. it's it's rare it's rare so you know, did you learn anything personally from playing Mia? And is there any message you hope she gives to audiences? Um, yes, I did. I did learn. I learned some confidence through playing Mia for sure. Um, before that, before the A-list, um, I had a role on a British daytime soap opera here in the UK. Um, and I played um, a character who was so different from Mia and she was really kind of like book smart and, you know, what didn't care about fashion or boys, she was quite shy and just wanted to go to university and do really well. And she wasn't cool at all, bless her. I loved playing her, but like, she was very different to, um, to Mia. So when I then jumped into playing Mia, it's like season two Mia is, without giving too much away again I'm trying to think like what I could say season two Mia is very different to season one Mia 
purposefully because it's supposed to show that she's grown and changed. Season one, Mia with the, the, the skimpy clothes and, you know, the little outfits and everything. You know, I wouldn't necessarily dress like that in um, real life. And there I was in like teeny tiny shorts and little crop tops and stuff in the cold. Um, just being like, oh, God, uh, is, I'm not that kind of com confident a person. To everyone would be like, look at me. Um, so she kind of taught me to write. No, OK, like I can do this. I can I can pull this off. Like I can play confident. Um, and it's like fake it till you make it. If you play confident enough, <laughs> it will start you to seep good. in. <laughs> yeah, it will start to seep in. So, um, you know, all her little struts and stuff like that and the way she talks started to kind of I started to be more OK with that. I think she's definitely like. Yeah, taught me that confidence. I wouldn't say I'm as I'm anywhere near her, but um, and I think that the message that I hope that Mia puts across is that we, and to be honest, this isn't like exclusive to Mia. This is a lot of the characters, to be honest, but but specifically Mia, um, that we're not perfect like Mia is very flawed and she does questionable things at times but that is very human yeah yep. like don't if there's any young people you know watching the show don't beat yourself up too much we've all made mistakes and we've all done you know some bad things at times but it is important to own those mistakes and come through for your friends and do the right thing in the end um and she's a good example of that for sure. And then, you know, I'm circling back a little bit, but like we said, the strong friendship between Mia and Alex, you know, what was building that relationship like and just seeing the reactions and, and getting to see on screen how it came out? Yeah, there are so many great relationships in the show. Um, and Petal and Alex is another favorite of mine, but obviously like having experienced the Mia and Alex one myself, that has very, very um, special place in my heart because right from the start, when I when when I then did get sent the script, when, when I signed on, um, that, that relationship, even just reading it really stood out for me. Like, yes, there's all these, the, the boys that she likes and all that going on but the relationship with Alex happens quite organically and you can just see it grow and build through the episodes until the point at the end that they've really got each other's back and they're still what I like is they're still quite quippy with each other and they'll still do the little digs and stuff like that but that's you know that's their kind of like little witty banter they're both very much on the same level and what was so nice about it is that um, me and, and Rosie, who plays Alex, are that close in real life. We're so close. We talk most days. <laughs> uh, we see each other all the time. We're really close. And, and so it's nice that kind of life has imitated art in that respect. Um, and I love putting that out there, again, putting that out there to the world that like female friendships are important it's not always about kind of the the relationships the romantic relationships whether that's you know male 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 female 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 but friendships are also important so lots of messages in our show isn't there? <laughs> and I feel like as a viewer so many shows I'm watching I'm yearning for that strong female friendship for that strong friendship it's always, you know, relationship are great. I'm, you know, I'm going to ask you a few questions about that later, but like that was the first question I want to ask you because that was the relationship that really I felt was the heart of the show by the end yeah. of it and was beautiful. Like we need more of those, you know? Yeah, for, for sure. Me. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big so awesome and exciting fun. and all yeah. that. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I think we're trying to move, move past that. <laughs> yeah. And that continues through, through, season two yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think this is a, a spoiler I hope not but Alex will always is you'll see that Alex is always the first person that Mira will go to yes. when 
and that's the way it listen priorities um now moving on to the shipper questions because you know i have to ask you about that that's as well. fine um are you personally team dev or team luca like you outside of the show do you lean one way i'm sure oh. there's aspects that you love about both there are aspects that I love about both oh god I feel like I feel like you know what you know what no for once in my life I'm gonna be honest about this question yeah. you're gonna get yeah. my honest answer and Fair if enough. I break some hearts that is fine we'll deal with it, Do it. yes I'm, I'm sorry everyone out there who is who is team dev but I, on set I was quite openly team Luca <laughs> Oh, I love. Okay, so now I have to ask you, what's your favorite thing about them? What made you like lean that way? I, you've got to, you, you got to remember that I have a, I, obviously, it's hard for me to, to separate the experience yeah, from of the, of course. The, um, I loved working with Max. He's so goofy and silly and just so much fun and we have become good friends in real life as well so it was just really nice to be able to work with a, a friend if I try and I'm not that I'm not friends with the other two but like no, you know of course, of course. um we if I try and think just purely about character I just feel like that they have a lot of chemistry and sometimes you can't explain that. Sometimes that's just either the way it's written or two actors just have a lot of chemistry. They, but I just feel like there's a lot of that between them and that they um, they bounce off each other quite well um, and challenge each other. And I think Mia needs that. Definitely. There's a reason they kept giving us scenes between them, just saying. <laughs> But I love Deb and I love Jacob and it was a shame, you know, that he couldn't come out. It was just a scheduling issue. And I love Barnaby. He's amazing. Um, so I'd be I'd be happy if she ended up with Deb as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And so now I'm going to free you and let you get into some spoilers. So we're doing a little spoiler warning here. Go watch okay. season two and come back. <laughs> OK, cool. Um, the season ends on a very good note and does provide closure. However, there is that small little T yeah. <laughs> that no one can ignore at the very end. So if the opportunity presented itself to continue the show and portraying Mia, would you want to? If it, in terms of just pure, purely playing the character, then yes, um, but there'd have to be a good reason to. I feel like story wise, yes. I wouldn't want to do it if it was just for this for the sake of it. There's got to yeah. be a, a good reason for it. Um, but yeah, I, I like that it does leave it open. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Some some dream story do you have a dream storyline that you would like to do with Mia in the future? Like if you could create your own little like, or do you have in your mind sort of this is how That's Mia ends up? Question. That is such a good question. I feel like playing her for so long she has to be in the back of your mind and it's like yeah so so far I have played her with three nearly four years no actually well since I first started auditioning a good couple of years between um the this I've, I've played her but actually in story terms they run pretty much straight on so in her life she's the same age but in my life I'm actually like two three years older um so I it would be quite nice to pick her up again a few years later maybe maybe there's some new kids on the island and she needs to go you know save them or help out because she's someone who who did it before and we pick her back up at a slightly different point in her, in her life and um yeah may, maybe something like that would be cool yeah, um and also it gives a chance then for like some new characters and some you know um some new stories in there as well but um but yeah it would be fun to do yeah. okay what was the biggest i know there were a lot but the biggest jaw-dropping moment for you reading the script um 
probably probably um the death at the end maybe like that 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 they were brave enough to do that anyway because it's written for a relatively young audience um and it is quite sad that <laughs> that that happens <laughs> um so i think reading that i was like oh wow okay we're well, going there <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so that but probably that were there any challenging scenes for you whether it was because of the physical aspect or getting in that emotional headspace anything like that um yeah uh, it is it is quite a physical show to film for my character anyway because through both seasons just the way that it's written she is always on the move like you could play a really good drinking game where you, you know drink every time <laughs> Mia either runs is running into a scene or running out of a scene or, like she's always on the move it, it's always it was so transitional like you know she's she's never in one place for long she's there she's having a quick conversation and then she's on to the next thing and then she's trying to find that person and then she's on to do this and so and obviously you know you're doing you see it once but you're on, doing it multiple <laughs> but i'm doing it multiple times yeah I will do it multiple times um i'd kind of learned from season one coming back to do it i was like okay i really i need to look after myself this time i need to <laughs> i need to be fit and healthy because <laughs> i struggled through it a little bit the first time i wasn't i, 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 I just didn't know it was gonna be like that um, i don't blame you at all so <laughs> um so yeah I just I did I looked after myself and just made sure that I was <laughs> healthy enough to do all the running <laughs> um so it wasn't as much of a challenge this time as it was last time probably the biggest challenge to be honest was um filming in because our show is predominantly outside filmed outside filming in UK weather yeah Gee, which yeah. is be famously bad and temperamental so there was a lot of rain and a lot of wind and storms and getting blown about and drenched and cold and um but that's just something that actors have to deal with is <laughs> it's rough yeah because you guys were predominantly outside so yeah, yeah. you know and keeping it like looking like it was one weather you know what i mean like you can't look like you're yeah. doing <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah that was our DOP's very tough job having to try and yeah make that happen season one we filmed over um the summer so all, we had a few a few bad days but overall it was really nice weather um season two we, I think initially was going to be filmed in the summer but got pushed back um because of situations we talked about um so it, it kind of was like autumn and winter um so we weren't as lucky with the weather but we got through it <laughs> yeah it came out good listen it came out good and then do you have any either memorable moments or funny stories from filming that really stand out to you I'm sure there's a bunch but when you look back on the experience oh my gosh I have such a bad memory so I'm so sorry that like I'm gonna be no. like this oh, was there any was there any good funny moments <laughs> there were a lot I've just got to think of them um there were a lot of dogs on set which was amazing oh. we're we're a, we're an animal loving cast so that was amazing um I think uh 80 percent of our like behind the scenes cast photos on all our phones and like I was with this dog oh <laughs> this 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 crew member's dog oh you know it just yeah <laughs> loved it um and we were filming in the countryside so there were you know cows and sheep and all other things <laughs> <laughs> so we've got lots of uh, I've got lots of good funny animal related memories and cool you know funny videos of us all play, you know playing with dogs and stuff like that so that's nice um got some fu funny memories of like filming in the rain with Max <laughs> um because right not regular rain although it rained a lot doesn't show very well on tv you need kind of heavier rain so these rain machines um and you get absolutely drenched um 
and so then between takes and stuff you just like I've got photos of me and Max just like wrapped up in loads of towels <laughs> and just like little burritos um so that's that's funny but yeah look like as a cast we really like genuinely get on so well so well like and I our producer on season one said that she was always so surprised never has she, has she had a cast click the way that we did um and become like a family and we all still you know talk on our group chat and and see each other as much as possible and yeah is it it was just such a cool pe group of people to film with so lots of laughs and my last little question for you is an open one just uh for you as an actress do you have any dream roles or projects that you hope to do in the future <laughs> i'm sure there's yes, a long list of course. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean the one that the one thing that i say every time i get asked this question is that i just love musicals i love musicals oh. so much. i'd love to be in a musical um so that that would be amazing one day i've watched musicals since i i was a child grew up on them like um grew up in a musical family as well so yeah any, any anything like that would be incredible um that that's probably my ultimate but just in general then i'd like to be a continue playing kind of these non-stereotype roles that is just just so important to me um and just have a varied career and not be stuck doing one thing or one type of character not be pigeonholed um would that would, yeah that would be amazing <laughs> viewers like me thank you for for seeing those strong roles and oh, like I said it was so it was amazing seeing you both lead and you know because I watch so much and I know the difference I bet you do, <laughs> yeah, you must do. <laughs> I, I know the difference and that immediately stood out for me to me since day one so viewers like me thank you and thank it was so such much. a pleasure to speak with you today thank, thank you for thank taking you so the much. time and uh you're welcome to see what you do thank you for inviting me <laughs> oh of course please <laughs> of course and i can't wait to see what you do next cool thank you well hopefully i'll speak to you again for the next thing uh, yes definitely and stay safe you too bye All right, bye